10 documents you're going to need before you come to Ecuador. Before you come to Ecuador with your plans of getting a visa, there's certain documents that you're going to need. So I'm going to go over those documents that you need. I'm also going to tell you documents that you're going to want to get even though they're not spelled out as requirements. And I'll tell you why. And as an added bonus, <laughs> if you can consider it a bonus, it's towards the end I'm going to tell you about the documents that you will need to get while you are here once you arrive in Ecuador. A few things before we get to the documents. You need a visa that's valid for at least six more months. All documents that I'm going to list need to be certified or notarized and they all need an apostille attached requirement. So let's get to the documents. Number one, you need an FBI report. Everybody needs one. As a matter of fact, for uh, the longer tourist visa, they're also requiring it. Now, <clears throat> some people argue this, and if you're looking on Facebook and you're seeing some of these arguments going on, there's a difference between what is legally required and what some office may or may not require. I experienced myself requirements of documentation that's not required by other people in other offices. It's just the way it works here. It's kind of crazy. So when I go over my documents for you, it, it's going to take that into account. So you need a FBI report. In some places with some people, that can be a considerable delay. So if you're planning on coming, make this one of your first, make this one of the first documents that you apply for. Now, it can be two weeks. It could also be months. So get in early just to be sure. I don't want to forget any. You also are going to need a state police report. I realize that it's identical to the FBI report, but they don't realize that here. And so they're going to require a state police report. Now, these reports must take place in where you have lived for the past five years. So let's say three years ago you were living in North Carolina, but for the last two years you've been living in New York. You're going to need from both states. So don't forget that. Number three, a marriage certificate if you are currently married, a divorce certificate if you are currently divorced. If you've never been married, of course you don't need anything, but you absolutely need to have these. So be sure that you get them. And of course you need a legal and valid passport, and as I mentioned, with at least six months left on it. Number five, birth certificate. You absolutely need to have a birth certificate. Now, if you have a copy of one, that won't be good enough. But you say, I lost my original and I had to get a copy. That's okay as long as it's certified by the state. So mine was in New York, so I requested it from New York. You can actually do it online with most states. And I requested that it be certified. That's an extra charge. It's not very expensive. So I had it certified and then sent to me. That's what you need to do. Number six, you need a visa application filled out. You can find that online. Or if you're using an attorney, which I recommend, they can provide one for you if you can't find one online. Number seven, a copy of your current medical plan. So if you're in the United States, for example, and you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, you want to have a copy of that. You want to get it certified. And of course, with all documents and apostille attached and bring that. It will be accepted from everything I've been told by attorneys out of the immigration office in Quito. It will be accepted at a minimum enough for you to get established. Number eight. Now here's one that's optional. Proof of education. Now, 
I didn't know this because nobody told me and it wasn't written anywhere that I could find, although it's probably out there somewhere, but I'm going to tell you. You may think, I'll never need it. I'm never going to go for a job. It's never going to apply to me. So why bother taking the extra step? I'm telling you, bother and take the extra step. When you ultimately receive your cedula, it will have your education on it. Mine says Inicio. That's basically a completely uneducated person. That's somebody who's never gone to grade school. It's a baby. So I have the education of a two-year-old. Now, you may say that's not important, and generally I would agree with you, but there are certain things. For example, if you want to start a business, that can be problematic. If you want to get a driver's license, that can certainly be an issue. Now, it's not that you can't necessarily get a driver's license, but at minimum, there will be extra steps that you have to go through. And trust me, with the bureaucracy here, there are no extra steps that you want to have to deal with. What's required is certainly more than enough. So there are situations where you are going to wish you had done that. And once you are here, it becomes not only much more difficult, but it becomes extremely expensive. For example, getting a document in the United States that has a cost of $10, an apostille of $10, 20 bucks, no big deal. You just have to apply for it and wait and receive it. When you are here, that can turn into $500. Between the shipping costs, the extra fees, getting an apostille, just getting an apostille alone can run you up to $200 if you're out of the country. So it becomes very complicated, very problematic. You go on a search for information. It, it can be frustrating. You don't want to do that. So every document that you can possibly get that you may need, such as this one, is something that you should do ahead of time. Number nine, this is required for most visas, although there are investment visas where it's not, I'm, but I'm not going to go into the details of those. Whether it's required or not, again, I suggest that you have it in case you need it. Proof of income. Now, if it's Social Security, it's rather simple, but how do you get it notarized and certified because there's no document that's really designed for that? All you have to do is print off the one that you get off the internet, take it into an office, have them, they have a stamp, they just put a stamp on it that says Social Security Service and have the manager sign it. It's no big deal for them. They're not committing to anything. It's enough to be accepted here. Now, you can then sign below that with a notary and then get it apostilled. So then it will be considered as certified notarized with an apostille and it will work. If you have other sources of income, then you want to have proof of that. Again, with the same documentation. And last on the list of 10, is your driving record. Now, you don't need to drive here. As a matter of fact, I advise over and over, and I've done a couple videos about it, that it makes no sense to drive, in my opinion. You may decide that it's worth the risk and it's worth the expense to drive, even though when you get to El Centro, there's no place to park. I certainly wish the situation were different, where I could at the very least have a motorcycle again. But it's not, and so it's just one of those things that I sacrifice. However, at one point, if I had brought, if I had known and had brought a copy of my driving record, my license would have actually been transferable and it would have been a minimum of requirement and I probably would have done it and got a license even if I wasn't driving. You don't know what the future is and on the list of requirements, they don't tell you these things. So those are the 10 documents that you either must have or I recommend that you get because, again, they're simple and cheap, here difficult and expensive. The things that you can and probably should wait until you get to Ecuador and some things you must wait. Number one, translations. Every document must be translated with one exception and that is your college transcript. They don't require that to be translated. Every other document requires a Spanish language 
transcript. And that transcript must be taken to a notary and legalized for it to be valid. Legalization, every document that you have along with those uh, transcripts need to be legalized. Again, you just go to a notary, you pay the six, ten, fourteen dollars, I forget what it is, maybe fourteen dollars each, some, something like that. Don't quote me. It will cost money. You will pay for that. Passport photos. They say two. You're going to want probably half a dozen, but don't bring them. Don't bring passport photos. Take them when you're here. First of all, it's dirt cheap. I mean, uh, a dozen photos is maybe a couple dollars. But besides that, when they say passport photo, it's a different size. It's a different format than the ones you're going to get in the U.S. So wait until you get here. It will be really cheap. It's very simple to get. And it will be the perfect size for them to accept. And you'll need it for a few things, like your migratory movement paper. You will need uh, several of them. Bring extra. I ran into it where they got the two, but they still wanted more. And, uh, and that was frustrating. So just, you know, when you go and take them, get extra. When you go to the office, bring, bring the extra. You're going to need a color copy of your passport, the signature page and the information page. That information is going to be notarized. You'll take that to the notary. It'll be signed off. It'll get a stamp. So it's important that you do that when you're here. They will require it. My suggestion, get several. And the last thing that you must get when you're here, and that's a mobility certificate. You'll go to a separate office. Um, if you have a lawyer, they'll walk you through all of this. They'll make it relatively simple. Can you do it yourself? Yes, you can do all of this yourself. All the documents in the U.S. you must do yourself. No one else can do it for you. My word of advice is hire a lawyer. Don't pay some outrageous. Anything over $1,000 is, is really probably too much. Somewhere in the seven to $900 range for one person is, is a reasonable price. And you'll be glad that you did as long as you had a decent lawyer. Beware of some of these visa facilitators. Some are very good and they're experienced and they know what they're doing. But understand they have no legal training. The reason that they're very good is that if they've been doing it for a period of time, that simple repetition causes them to really understand how this works and they can get it through for you problem comes in is we've had a lot of changes recently and they're still not worked out. They're not settled. And so if you're getting your visa in the next year or two, I would recommend a lawyer, somebody who has actual legal training. Um, but it's your choice. You can do it yourself. You can uh, hire a visa facilitator. You can hire a lawyer. But expect it can cost you up to $1,000. Uh, personally, I think it's money well spent. On top of that, there will be costs. You're going to be paying your visa fees, the mobility certificate fees, the certifications, the translations. These things are typically extra cost. So you could spend as much as a couple thousand dollars to do a visa. I will tell you this. If you're married, the second the spouse if she's not coming on a standalone visa, so she's coming essentially as a dependent, that's much less complicated and relatively inexpensive. So you can do two for a little more than the price of one. So keep that in mind. And the last thing on these fees is some attorneys will include all fees that come up, which can be a pretty good deal if you're talking a few hundred dollars more. So you may want to consider that. Um, choosing a lawyer, that's a whole nother thing. And I don't know exactly how to tell you because I've had both good and bad for different things here. And it's frustrating when you get a bad one. Those are the 10 documents you need and that's what to expect once you get here that you're going to need to do. I hope this helps you. Get all the documentation and if there's something that you think you might need, go ahead and get it while you're there. See you later. No, you could. 
but that's beside the point. You, I wish that I, uh, I wish that I, it, the, 